All right, thanks for tuning in to our preview of the 2024 Scottish Open. And this is going to be located at the Renaissance Club in Scotland for, I believe it is now, six straight years. So uh, we're going to talk... uh, we're going to talk about the Renaissance Club, how important it is uh, as far as the stats, the key trends, things of that nature, our picks, and so much more as uh, Jared and I are back talking golf. Uh, and how's it going, Jared? We've been uh, we've been a uh, little uh, MIA the last couple of weeks. but Yeah, I mean, most of the good players on tour have been MIA as well in these, uh, you know, crappy, crappy tournaments, crappy fields. I like you. You're coming off a win, so you're you, you must be a big uh, fan of the John Deere Classic now. But uh, you know, gl- glad to have a good field this week, and uh, always exciting just for you know these couple events overseas, just kind of different type of golf that that we see for most of the season. Yeah, next week, of course, is a big Open Championship preview. Jan Stevenson uh, will be with us, Hall of Famer. So uh, we'll be recording that right now. It looks like early Tuesday morning, so we should uh, have that available for you guys uh, around uh, Tuesday afternoon, the latest. Uh, so I uh, can't wait to get into that. Um, matter of fact, uh, you know, we've been uh, talking a lot over the course of the last several months about some futures. So hope you've taken advantage of that. Uh, but next week is the real deal. Uh, so that's coming up. And uh, yeah, it, it was uh, interesting last couple of weeks. Uh, by the way, just want to remind everybody that whenever we are not on the air talking golf over the next couple of months, there should be a couple more tournaments. I think the 3M we might be off for. Uh, which is going to be after Royal Troon, uh, Olympic week, and maybe that's it. I think we'll be up and and going the rest of the way. Uh, But don't forget to check out the link for our Discord channel because that's uh, where, if we have any picks, we're going to post our picks that week. Uh, I've been posting my picks the last couple of weeks there. And um, matter of fact, if you think about it, Jared, uh, we are actually in in like a little bit of a zone uh, because – uh, but the the, the uh, travelers, you had Tom Kim, and he loses in a playoff uh, at forty five to one. Uh, and then uh, the last two weeks in the Rocket Mortgage, I had Batia, who choked uh, on Sunday and finished second, and I had Davis Thompson, who finished second. Uh, and so we had runner-ups in the next uh, two weeks leading up to John Deere last week where Davis Thompson came through for me. So uh, it's, it's been, uh, you know, a pretty good last several weeks. I don't know whether or not, uh, you know, we can continue that, but that's what we're here for. So We can. We can continue it for sure. All right. I like that positive uh, way of thinking. I love it. Okay. So uh, let's get right to it. And uh, keep in mind, this is only the third year that this event has been co-sanctioned by the PGA Tour. So that means that 70, approximately 75 players from the PGA Tour and the DP Tour, uh, the DP World Tour, European Tour, the way I like to call it, uh, will make up the field. So that's, it's going to be about 150 players, 75 from each tour. So I guess that's kind of key uh, for everybody to know because even though they've been playing at the Renaissance Club the last five years, it's only been the last two that we've had like a real uh, top-heavy kind of field. Yeah, so that makes it challenging. Um, the fact that there's no strokes gain data for any of those tournaments makes it challenging. So yeah, like from a you know stats perspective, we're flying a little blind this week. Um, but you know, we know it's a course in Scotland. Now, this is a course in Scotland, but it's not like most of the courses in Scotland that are like hundreds of years old. This course was built in 2008. Um, so, it, you know, I guess maybe plays a bit more modern than you know, even like a, a course we're going to see in, in a couple of weeks at, at Troon. Um, but it's it's still a, a course in Scotland. It's still going to be affected by the weather. You're still going to have the pot bunkers. You're going to have the you know long fescue. So it's, it's going to look like a Scottish course. So, I mean, I, I know one of the, you know, again, there's not many stats to look at this week, but I, I did just look at open history. You know how guys have performed in the open as kind of a help for pointer for this week because I do think there's always going to be crossover between you know those courses and this course. And uh, matter of fact, that stat uh, you can see that is below the screen. That's uh, part of the ticker. So check that out. Uh, also, uh, just a couple of quick notes regarding this five-year stretch. Their winnings score under par average has been 14.6. 
Um, now, I, I, I who was it two years ago that won at seven under par? Oh, Shoffler. Xander. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's all been double digits. We we did have a 22 under par, but that was year one. So the last two years with Rory and Xander, we've had a seven under par, and Rory won at 15 under par last year. So just keep that in mind. Uh, how about this? Playoffs have decided three of the five events, and every single event has been decided by one stroke. So that's good. A little, little drama on 18 to end things. Uh, and if you like to live wager, again, check out the bottom of the screen uh, because uh, there are some very interesting notes regarding uh, how you could take advantage if you get off to a slow start here. Okay, so winners have been 8 and 11 shots back. Okay, matter of fact, all five winners yeah. started at least four shots back after round one. How about that? So if you want to wait until... Maybe you even wait. I know it's tough, but just wait until after <laughs> round one, and then you're going to get better odds uh, because you're just going to go after those those players that are four shots back or more, yeah. and obviously the odds are going to be bit more in your favor. So, yeah, well, uh, t- all this stuff you're saying, the you know guys coming from behind, the fact that the winning scores have been kind of you know we've had the one at seven under and a bunch of low scoring. Yeah, that all speaks to the weather impact here, right? Like the year Xander won at seven under, it was it was windy and rainy i think i recall at least a couple of the rounds so you know the all all these courses um you know over in, in the uk are impacted by weather so i think that speaks to the live wagering opportunities you know there could be some days even where guys that go out early in the morning don't see much wind and can go shoot low numbers and then guys in the afternoon are faced with you know a bunch of wind so if you pay attention to that stuff um there's definitely some uh some money to be made potentially yeah so and that's definitely something you should be paying attention to the next two weeks the weather yep. so yeah uh do you have a place that you'd like to recommend i can post it on the discord there is i use that site wind windfinder.com and um you know you, you just got to find the, the nearest wind station to where the course is um and that that gives you accurate wind info so i can i can post that on the, on the discord very cool all right Let's uh, take a look at our picks. So here they are, uh, my picks, Jared's picks. Simple as that. Uh, we both have four picks this week, so it wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't by design. Just the way it all turned out. And matter of fact, uh, looking at your picks, Jared, uh, two of your players, uh, I, I think I would have had on my picks, uh, and the, they are Wyndham Clark and uh, mm-hmm. Dietrich. So I think Dietrich's an excellent long shot, like you do. And I think Wyndham Clark, uh, considering he had that finally, that top 10 we've been waiting for, that yeah. we don't know, could be a blip, because he hasn't played all that well the last few months, or it could be the sign that his game is, is back. And if it is, you're taking advantage of him at 45 to 1. Yeah, so in looking at that ninth place at the Travelers, he did, he did putt well. But he also gained three and a half strokes on approach, which was his best approach week since the players back okay. in March. Um, so cool. yeah, I, I I like that, and, I, and I'd sort of been waiting for signs of life from Wyndham Clark to get back on him. And what you also got to like is he's played pretty well at this golf course, 16th in 2022, 25th uh, last year here um, at the Open. You know, he only has two. Uh, times at the open but he did come 33rd last year so he has some you know experience on this type of golf course and again he's played well at uh renaissance club and you know again we don't have a ton of stats here but i did look at guys that have you know come top five top ten at this course over the last two years long hitters and good putters kind of is what i found to be kind of the recipe for success here and Wyndham clark is a very long hitter and he can be you know at times, one of the best putters on tour. So I just think this is a good course fit for him. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 we've been talking all year about him getting really good odds, but the fact is is he hasn't been playing all that well, so that top ten was very important. And I'm sure he is really determined to make sure that he ends the season strong because it hasn't really been the season that uh, he thought it would be. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm going with Morikawa as my top pick. And uh, originally I looked at it and I said, you know what? Uh, He doesn't have a good history here. So I was immediately, and and the odds are low. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at DraftKings right now and they're up to 14. So uh, that's better. Um, I have him at 12. Uh, But the fact is, is that 
I said, you know what, though, l- l- let me let me just take a step back and, and, and a couple of things. First of all, he, he's on a tremendous run, as we know. He's got eight straight top 20s, five top 10s, three top fives, runner-up at Memorial. So he is the hottest golfer pretty much out there that hasn't won yet this year. And when I looked at his two visits here, now, again, the one that really mattered was the one that happened two years ago when, when it was san- co-sanctioned. He was not playing well at the time. So when he missed the cut, not a big surprise because he wasn't playing well. He's playing really well now. So I'm willing to say, okay, that's not a big deal. Plus, your stats show it there. This is a guy that's won the Open Championship. Yeah, So exactly. he knows how to win <laughs> at this part of the country. And maybe the new trend could be, as we've seen with, in, with the co-sanction the last two years, McElroy, Shafle, two of the top players in the game. So maybe that's what we'll get. Maybe a top player wins again. That's why I wanted to throw a top player in there. You have a top player as well. Actually, you have two yeah. of them. One just happens to be 45 to 1. But uh, I, I just thought this was definitely a week that I wanted to at least have you know, a really good yeah. player there. And, and I kind of felt that some of those uh, underlying uh, notes made a lot of sense for me to say, okay, I'll, I'll take it even though he's 12 to 1. Well, I mean, Rory and Xander are our two winners here since this, be, you know, became the co-sanctioned event. So, yeah, you know, there's, I think, that, as you said, Greg, that's why I wanted to have uh, some top players as well. I do think um, it seems like a tournament where the top guys, uh, you know, are, are, are good bets. Um, with Morikawa, he just he historically is not a good wind player. Um, and you look at 2022 when he missed the cut here again. That was the year Xander won at minus seven. Morikawa struggled. You look at the time he won the Open Championship, that was a low-scoring Open. There was not much wind involved. So I think with Morikawa especially, you want to keep an eye on the weather um, if it's not supposed to be windy, which last I looked, when I looked uh, Sunday night, you know, last night, it wasn't expected to be windy. That that can change, obviously, uh, you know, on the time here. But um, I think if you're betting Morikawa, you don't want it to be too windy. And by the way, I mean, I'm guessing that when Shoffley won the year he missed the cut, mm-hmm. that – it was probably windy because the scoring was low. Exactly. Seven under. Yep. So, yeah, that'd be my guess. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, okay, so Hovland. Now, Victor, that's your top pick. And he's obviously been playing a lot better, as we know, the last month or so, um, including third at the PGA. Um, I, I still wonder if, if there's something missing because we, the, the one thing that we just haven't seen him do yet is put himself in position on Sunday – and let's see what happens. Um, again, third at PGA, but it, you know it wasn't like he was really uh, in in one of those situations. Uh, yeah. Why do you like him this week? Yeah, so I do think he's still trending in the right direction, despite the fact that he missed cut at the U.S. Open, twentieth at the Travelers. Looking through the stats, it was around the green that killed him, and that's really been for the past two months now the ball striking has been kind of like back to peak victor hovel levels but the around the green game has what's been holding him back whatever it is he he likes playing in the uk i mean at, at this event he's gone miscut in 2022 and then he came 23rd last year but if you look at victor hovelin's open history 12th 4th and 13th yep um so you know whatever it is and i do think part of it is the short game we know a lot of these courses don't have that you know super thick or off or any of those are really like tricky runoff areas you can a lot of the times you can putt around the green here so just i don't know something about these type of courses victor hovland has done well at um i think it's a good spot and again you talk about if this course is a course where you want to be a long hitter and a good putter you know hovland checks both of those boxes yeah remember at the end of the year last year in case you disappeared after uh you know football season and the regular seasons i mean the playoffs are over in the pj tour uh if you weren't following, he was he kept his great play up over in Europe. Uh, he was fifth at the BMW PGA, second at the DP Tour World Championship. So uh, he was still red hot. And I agree. We talked about this last year. I talked about this maybe about a month ago. That once again, I'm zeroing in on taking Victor Hovland in the Open Championship. If there's a major that I have the most confidence in that he's mm-hmm. going to win, it's next week. So, agreed. Okay. Uh, now, again, you took Clark with your second pick. I went with Fleetwood, and and I just think this is one of those weeks that I think you just have to take him. And I know the odds are the odds, but 
it's 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 not a, a complete field, so I'm willing to forgive that. Even though, yeah, I wish I had a little bit better odds. Uh, Fleetwood is still twenty to one right now. The fact is, he's trending in the right direction. He's played in this course four times. He has three top tens, two top fives, and a runner-up. He was sixth last year, fourth the year before that, in the two years with the co-sanctioned deal. 34 under par over four events combined. And I just think that's just too much. And we know how good Tommy is as far as a potential open championship uh, contender. Uh, so why not this week? And look, it's a PGA Tour co-sanctioned event. He still hasn't won a PGA <laughs> Tour. This would be right. fitting that Tommy would like get like a PGA Tour win in Scotland. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, so he, Tommy's third in my model this week. It's Rory one, Xander two, Tommy three. So I'm not going to say he's great value at 20 to one, but like he kind of deserves to be 20 to one. You know, I don't, I don't think you're you know overpaying for him. I think it, it makes all the, all the sense in the world. Yeah. And you got him uh, number two down below uh, in that uh, uh, key stat that we have there. Correct. Yep. Okay. So our third picks, uh, we both went with uh, players that are around 40, 50 to one. Uh, just taking a look at the updated odds here. McIntyre, my pick is 45 to 1. Straka, your pick, uh, has gone up to 60 to 1. So, uh, anyway, yeah, Straka, uh, if you take a look at uh, the, you actually took him uh, at the Travelers uh, on our last show. And yep. um, he is coming off, uh, uh, you know, he, he was just hanging around last week. Nothing great, especially, you know, but overall. Um, you know, Strzok is having a decent year. And uh, what did you specifically like, though, about him at this event? Yeah, disappointing last week, but, you know, defending champion. I know they have all different, you know, additional requirements that they need to, you know, do media-wise before the event. So I always, you know, I think it can be tough for defending champs. I'm going to forgive him for the poor outing last week. He he just, prior to last week, he'd been hitting the ball excellent tee to green, you know, off the tee approach excellent every week the putter has sort of been letting him down lately but like long term he, he's a good putter and i also so straka played here in 2022 missed the cut his only appearance at this course but i like that he had that second place finish at the open last year uh, if you remember you know it was kind of it was not that he was ever in it but it was it was kind of you know, a battle for second place behind Harmon and straka ended up you know winning that battle so i like the experience there i like the fact that he you know, played well in his you know last trip to the uk and i i think he's he's pretty good value at 60 to 1 yeah, he's uh, it's 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 happened pretty. You know, he's one of those players where things have really changed uh, for him pretty quickly over the last couple of years. Um, but again, the bottom line is uh, he has he's not coming in here on a hot run, but you are now getting pretty good odds there at sixty to one. Okay, yep. um, and then my pick is McIntyre. Now here's the interesting thing, is that now we all remember last year losing to Rory. Uh, that was dramatic, the way Rory uh, beat him. And, of course, it really killed the, the hearts of those Scottish fans that McIntyre lost. But it was Rory beating him. So uh, that was uh, very tough uh, to take. But I'm sure they were some of them were okay with it. He's been very inconsistent over the last six events, McIntyre. He's missed three cuts in those last six. And he's had top 20s in the other, including two top 10s and a win. And it's happened every other week. So he's been good, miscut, win, miscut, good, miscut. So a couple things I'm looking at here. One is that, well, if that trend continues, he's going to place, same golf course. You know, he's got the crowd behind him. He's playing the best he's ever played before. And why not go after him after he played so well here last year and he's playing really well. Uh, number two, and the trend. Uh, the other thing is I think he might actually also be a pretty decent play next week. So that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm taking him this mm -hmm. week. Something happens yep. where, you know, he's playing okay or whatever happens. Because, again, he's inconsistent. I still think no matter what he does this week, I think next week he's a guy that might be a pretty good long shot play. Yep, sure. I think he's – I've always thought he was super – I remember – Way early in the season when he was struggling, he was like 120 to one in some event. And I'm, I was just like, you know, let's throw a couple bucks on McIntyre. I just, I think he's just better than what he had been playing, and he, he's kind of proven that to be correct. He's kind of back in form, so I think he kind of is where he belongs on the odds board at this point. I definitely think he's live this week, and I definitely think he's live uh, next week. He's had, I think, a couple top tens in the open, right? I think it's like first two open appearances. He, he top ten both of them. 
And then our official long shots, uh, Dietrich at 80 to 1, McKibben at 80 to 1. We've never talked about Tom McKibben before. <laughs> Tell uh, me about Tom McKibben. I don't know much about Tom McKibben. Yeah. Uh, McKibben uh, won his first European uh, tour event last year. Uh, he was ranked 335th in the world. So, And by the way, he's the same nationality as Rory. So he's now the 102nd ranked player in the world. And he's done that without winning since the win uh, last year uh, in the European Open. Why? Because he's got 11 top 25s in 13 events this year. Six of those are top 10s, two top fives, and a runner-up. The runner-up was two weeks ago at the Italian Open. He has, he's got a lead. Uh, he, he does, he's inside, you know, he's waiting in the, in the wings, waiting for uh, uh, Marcel Seam uh, to come in. And, uh, this, and he was trailing at the, at, at the time. And this dude just nails, like, I don't know, there's like a 15, 20-foot putt on 18 to force a playoff. So they go to the playoff, and same thing basically happens. The German knocks in a you know a ten or fifteen foot putt and beats him. So McKibben has been snake bitten, but he's been like the most consistent player on the, in the European Tour that hasn't won this year. And I think uh, this is one of these events that um, you know maybe because the United, which is like you said, a lot of the. Uh, uh, viewers in the United States don't don't know some of these guys over in Europe yeah. um, that this might be the event that kind of opens everybody's eyes and by the way if he can win an event like this it'll go a long way in putting him in position to possibly find a way to get into the PGA Tour next year uh, if that would still be a possibility but he's got to win he's got to do something dramatic and maybe that would be something that he can do on Sunday nice yeah I mean these DP World Tour guys are blind spots for me because i don't have stats on them and i don't watch a ton of the dp world tour so i'm not sure i'll bat mckibben but i'll probably toss him in a uh a draft kings lineup see, yeah, see how not? he does for me so dietry too uh like i said i, I i've got yeah. dietry i definitely put a couple of bucks on him already at 80 to 1 like you said uh he has uh two good results in the last three years on this golf course including a runner-up uh, right. And what I really like about him, and maybe he's even a dark horse next week, even though the guy still hasn't won on the PJ Tour yet. Again, maybe he does a Fleetwood. Is the fact that 14th at the U.S. Open, fourth at mm -hmm. the PGA Championship. So he's already had yeah. two, and he did not get to play in the Masters. So in his two major appearances, he played great. And next week's another major, and maybe in an environment that's even a lot more comfortable for him. So whether you take him this week or next week, I, I think he's a play either way. Yeah, Dietrich also came fourth at Pebble Beach, which was an elevated event. He came 20th at Farmers, you know, a, a tough golf course. So he has seemed to kind of, you know, like you said, he hasn't he hasn't gotten the win yet, but he, he's played well in these um, tougher fields. I like the fact that, like you said, Greg, he's he's played here all five years, including that second place finish to, to Minwoo Lee in 2021. And then again, I'm going to go back to – long drivers and good putters Dietrich checks both those boxes i mean he, he's one of the best putters in this field at least he has been this season i mean i'm looking at his stats right now a bunch of you know positive putting weeks and some super big spike putting weeks so if it does come down to you know a hot putter and a long driver um Dietrich can definitely do both of those things all right so there you go those are our top picks for this week's event and uh, what else? Uh, who g gave us a list of uh, a few other players if you had them that you were thinking about and why? So we didn't talk about Tom Kim, but I came close to betting Tom Kim, a guy who, oh, yeah. you know, like you said, was was close to winning a couple weeks ago. Loses in the playoff to Scotty has been really good here. Um, has been good at the Open, um, including last year had, had a nice finish at the Open Championship. So you know his odds are a bit low for me, right? I think he's down to like 28 to one now. It's the only reason I didn't get to him, but I think um, Tom Kim checks uh, a lot of boxes this week. Sixth last year, third the year before that. I mean, he's got really good numbers. He's got just as bad. I think his numbers are probably good, probably better than anybody. Uh, I mean, he's even Fleetwood. Fleetwood six and fourth. He's six and third. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, I'm only talking about the last two years. Uh, you know what? The guy right next to him, Min Woo Lee. I was thinking about him too because yeah. he's trending in the right direction coming off a runner-up 
he won this event before the co-sanction started three years ago so uh but again i just think uh, he's trending the right way justin thomas i'm interested in because he's just like when uh, clark he's coming off a good finish and he does have yep. three top tens in his last six so you know and we talked about this we want to take justin and we're hoping we're going to get him at the right time before he wins and then the next time he's just yep. not going to get good odds so this is still an opportunity because i believe he's still around 35 to 1. now 40 to yeah, 1 now yeah and I, I the results i don't think have necessarily been there i have i've pulled up right now but i always thought like he'd be a really good open player because he is he's an awesome win player he kind of has that creativity you need on these courses but you, you i don't know you look at his open history it's actually not that good i mean he has an 11th place in 2019 and nothing inside the top 35 outside of that so for whatever reason he hasn't been too good in the uk but he it does seem like he's you know kind of trending it's been a roller coaster season for jt every time i feel like he's getting it going yeah. he starts to stumble then i kind of get off him and he starts to show signs of life again so tough to figure him out the, the last long shot i looked at this week and I actually might still throw a few bucks on him is uh nikolai Ho- hoigard who um you know, has been he's had a disappointing season uh, on the you know, PGA Tour this year, but he's had some good open finishes. You know, he was 23rd last year at the Open, and he was sixth here last year. Um, he he might just be one of these you know PGA Tour guys that just just plays better in Europe. Um, yep. I think he, he was a uh, hundred to one last I looked, which I think is a good number just for the talent that he has. I mean, he was he was in, in the Ryder Cup last year. Yeah, and matter of fact, uh, he's the one that beat Victor Hovland uh, in that DP World Tour Championship event at the end of the season and that gave him the opportunity to be on the pga tour this year as a full-time member um also guys i was considering i mean look you can't discount aaron rye the way he's playing right now yeah i mean yep. uh, the only thing is he's down to 45 to 1 that's kind of a low number with a field like this and it's big time golf now but hey he's won this event before so that should help ma- make matters a little bit better problem is he's missed a cut here in the two years has been co-sanctioned but he's got seven straight top 40s and he's playing excellent golf he's playing the best golf of his career so uh, i was looking at him by the way benny on was third last year uh he's had a good number um yeah. he's just not playing all that well uh and but then again i looked at it and he wasn't playing all that well last year at this time and still finished third yeah i looked at benny on too because of, of the course history and the fact that he has you know generally had a good season but um now the, the last three events really the ball striking has kind of gone away you know especially on approach he has two two of the last three events he's lost strokes to the field on approach so um I don't, i'm you know it, the hot streak is kind of subsided for yep. Benny on at this point maybe a, maybe a course he likes kind of gets him going again I was saying I was looking at Brian Harmon I mean why not he wins the sure. open last sure. year I know he's got to look forward to that but next week you know it's, that's where he's going to get the distraction and this right. week he's, he was 12th last year on this golf course and he's coming off a top 10 and he hasn't had a lot of top 10s this year so I was looking at and you're getting a good number on Harmon and and, and, yep. and you know what I, I know it's unlikely but Davis Thompson is just playing so well right now. Uh, yes. it, it, you know, you just wonder what would happen if he got himself in contention over the weekend, um, because mm-hmm. the kid has got a great game. I mean, he's going to be a really good player. Yep, he is. He had he has never played this event, and he also has never played an open. So I don't know, if, you know what experience he has um, in the UK, but nothing, nothing that, that I can see. Uh, also, let's see. Um, I was interested a little bit in McCarthy. He's getting a big number. He's trending in the right direction. Uh, Pavon, he's getting a big number. He's had a great year on the PG Tour. And yeah. uh, I figured, hey, it's comfortable surroundings for him here at this side of the uh, pond. And he's getting close to 100 to 1. So uh, mm-hmm. he's somebody. And Eric Cole is playing the best golf of the season. And he's 150 to 1. Uh, he did play here last year and made the cut. So I thought, well, but problem is, though, he, he's he's played nine straight weeks. I mean, that's mm. just incredible. That's I, tough. That's I mean, tough. now he's got to go overseas, too, after playing nine straight weeks. So maybe that's a big reason why you're getting the number that you're getting. Um, so, yeah, so those are a few of the other players. By the way, um, keep, keep in mind that these uh, – I know we don't talk about them much, but there are three uh, Japanese players – um, that are especially two that we haven't seen a lot of 
uh, matter of fact, I don't think I've, I've, I've seen it before in a PG, uh, well, in the world rankings, where we've had three Japanese players um, that have all been, like, this good at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got this uh, Hoshino kid uh, who has six J- Japanese wins. He won the Qatar mm-hmm. Masters earlier this year, and he's been playing some solid golf. He's the 99th player in the world. And also... Uh, the other, oh, another guy I don't know a whole lot more of, uh, Kita Nakajima. Uh, he won his first European Tour event, the Indian Open, in March. Uh, he was 20th last week, sixth before that. He's had four Japanese wins, and he's 85th in the world. So keep an eye on these uh, Japanese uh, uh, players, um, especially this week, because maybe if uh, they're in contention or maybe you just get an opportunity to know more about them before the Open Championship next week, um, this is just one of those weeks, two-week periods, where you get to find out a lot more about players worldwide. Yeah, for sure. I, I like seeing these guys. Um, and I also like seeing Scotty Scheffler not being in this tournament to you know, give us give us a chance. Yeah, to that helps. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, next week, the Open Championship, we are going to be uh, with Jan Stevenson. Again, we should be recording the show Tuesday morning. And uh, we're going to go uh, dive in real deep into everything that you want to know about the Open Championship. Uh, Jared will have uh, at least uh, two to three key stats that you want to keep an eye on uh, for the big event, the last major of the season. Don't forget the time changing. So this is cool. For the next couple of weeks, you get to get up early in the morning and turn on the TV. And uh, sometimes uh, the the event's already started, depending on what time you get up uh, as far as uh, the coverage time. So uh, it's really cool, uh, you know, especially since it's only a few weeks out of the year. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, next week's the bi- another big week, and then after that we have a few weeks, and then the playoffs. So, yep, I'm ready to start my uh, Royal Troon research. I'm probably gonna over the next few nights uh, watch the last time they played there, the uh, big Mickelson Stenson battle. <laughs> oh, by the way, one and duns. What, what are you? Uh, what are you now in your uh, picks down to? I mean, we're at the point where it's like you g- kind of got to just use the guys you still have remaining right now i was looking at mine I, i'm kind of i'm kind of fortunate but it also puts me in a tough spot like i still have i still have fleetwood i still have hovland and i still have wyndham clark available i still have tom kim available too i like all four of those guys this week um so it makes it a little tough for me i'm i'm probably going to use either hovland or fleetwood i do think fleetwood's going to be a popular pick this week um so maybe i'll go victor who i think will be a, a bit lower owned yeah well uh morikawa i still have morikawa and, and, okay. and he's only owned by 20% of the league. So uh, not go. a lot of people still have him in our league. So I, obviously this week is a big week for me to, to go that route. I've already uh, taken Tommy, so I can't go that route. Uh, Harmon's another one uh, I might be able to go with. I also have Tom Kim available. Uh, let's see. Uh, Minwoo Lee I've got available. Uh, who else? Uh, by the way, is uh, how's Zalatoris? He's in the field. That's all I know. I mean... He's he's a hundred to one last I checked, but um, yeah, I think that I was wish a, you. I, I mean, I, I wish you would. It seems like he's it seems like he's playing too much golf yes. for a guy coming off a, a serious injury. That's what and I was so going to say. He's like he's playing these low, you know, field low end tournaments. Much I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not his doctor. I don't know exactly what he's got going on, but I wish he would uh, take some more time off and just focus on these bigger events. But we'll see. Hundred percent. That's the first thing I thought about. It's like, dude, why are you doing? Why are you stretching yourself? Yeah. Tiger used to play, and I know he's not Tiger, but Tiger used to play like one event a month. I mean, come on, yeah. you don't have to play four straight weeks. I think that's. I think he hadn't played four straight weeks all season. And what happens mm-hmm. the very first time he plays the fourth straight week, he's got an injury. Yeah. So somebody's got to talk to him. Somebody. Somebody has to tell him just calm down. You don't have to go this fast, like you said. Especially, it's not mm-hmm. at a big event. But anyway, we certainly hope he's okay. Um, and uh, by the way, I also have McIntyre, so maybe I'll take him this week because ni- I think I think ninety-seven uh, percent still can take <laughs> him this week. So, yeah. all right. So anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in. Don't forget, you can check out Jared's uh, golf Twitter account there, Smola Golf Bets, and uh, look out for uh, the link in the description for the Discord channel again. We will put you know things there that we don't talk about here, especially, again, if it's an off week and we're not on the air. You can check out our picks there and uh, any other little tidbits. If you have any questions for us, uh, obviously, you leave them in the comment section here on the YouTube channel, and you can also do that on Discord. So for Jared Smola, I'm Greg DePama. We'll see you next week 
for our Open Championship preview.